This video tutorial will guide you through the setup of a newly installed PPT system from the configuration of the camera settings to the streaming of tracking data. In order to follow along, you should already have your cameras connected and positioned properly. The tutorial is divided into five sections. Section 1 shows the features of the 2D view and how to configure camera settings. Section 2 covers camera calibration. Section 3 shows the features of the 3D view. Section 4 covers the tuning utility and running the one-point test. Section 5 is an overview of the configuration pane. First, let's get familiar with the 2D view. This view shows an image of the selected camera, which in our case is camera 1. Here you can bring up the configuration settings for the camera, where you can adjust its gain and thresholds. The gain adjusts the sensitivity of the camera, which means a higher gain will produce a brighter image. The thresholds determine the minimal intensity a light has to have to be accepted as a marker. The purpose of adjusting the camera settings is to eliminate infrared light so that the cameras only pick up the light of the marker. By default, the gain is set to 50, the low threshold to 20, and the high threshold to 50. In general, these are good values to start with. For this video, we'll demonstrate the adjustment of these settings using PPTX cameras. If you are using PPTH cameras, you may find that the optimal values for the gain and thresholds are quite different than what we'll set here. To see if we get noise in the image, click this button. If there is green noise in the image, as you see here at the top of the camera view, you'll want to either lower the gain or increase the low threshold until the noise is gone. Turn on a marker and place it in the center of the tracking area. Adjust the high threshold until the bright green area inside the dark green area is similar to what you see here. In case there is no bright green area, then lower the high threshold until it is clearly visible. Now hit this button and a crosshair should appear in the center of the marker light. If you have any interfering light that cannot be eliminated from the workspace, you can crop out those regions of the camera view. This way that light will not be falsely identified by PPT as a marker. These are the buttons to remove, add, and restore the tracking space. By removing the area around the interfering light, the crosshair returns to the PPT marker. Auto remove scans the image for three seconds and removes all regions that were above the high threshold. In the camera pane you'll see smaller views of each camera. If the 2D view is currently active in the main window, a single click on a camera in the camera pane will enlarge its view there. Right clicking on a camera will bring an options window up. Select Copy Settings to All to copy the gain and thresholds that we adjusted for Camera 1 to all remaining cameras. Check the other camera views in the main window to make sure there is no noise and the crosshair appears clearly. If this is not the case for one of the cameras, adjust its settings using the same procedure used for Camera 1. The first option in the Options window is for activating or deactivating a camera. If a camera is deactivated, its view is entirely white. Unless you have intentionally suppressed a camera yourself, the only reason a camera would not be active is if it has just been added to an existing PPT system. In that case, you would activate it here. You can change the size of the cameras as they appear in this view using the drop-down list. This button turns on the histogram view for all cameras. The yellow area represents light and noise picked up by the cameras. The blue line represents the low threshold and the red line the high threshold. Camera settings can also be chosen using the histogram view, which is described in the documentation. This red bar in the right hand corner indicates that the camera is not calibrated. Once a camera has been calibrated, it will turn to a green check mark. 
Let's now perform a calibration of the system. Click this tab in the main viewport to access the calibration wizard. Calibration is necessary during the initial setup of a system or if any camera has been touched. This includes not only intentional movements of the cameras, but also accidental movements like bumping a camera or pulling a cable. WorldViz recommends to recalibrate the system from time to time to account for this. Calibration teaches your system where each camera is located and allows you to define the origin and orientation of your workspace. Make sure any PPT markers are turned off. Turn on the calibration rig and place it where you want the center of the workspace to be. The only requirement is that all cameras can see the four lights of the calibration rig. Use the camera pane to view all cameras simultaneously. Orient the calibration rig so that its positive X and positive Z axes are aligned in the directions that you desire for PPT's coordinate system. PPT North is defined as the direction of the positive Z axis. For a standard calibration, first use the reset button to clear previous calibrations. Next, click the calibrate button and the calibration process will begin. Each of the camera's four indicator lights should turn green after each flash of the calibration rig. As you can see, one of our cameras did not calibrate successfully because it was not able to see one or more of the lights of the calibration rig. The calibration of the other cameras is still valid and the system could technically be used. However, since a lower number of cameras means inferior tracking, it is advisable to track down why the calibration for camera 4 failed. The most common cause for this is simply an obstacle in between the camera and rig. Removing a chair I forgot in the workspace, I now see the four lights of the calibration rig showing in camera 4's view. One thing to take notice of here is a chain button where the calibrate button was before. A chain calibration means that the cameras are calibrated in stages and is used for tracking areas where not all cameras can see the calibration rig simultaneously, for example in a room that is L-shaped. For more information on this type of calibration, refer to the documentation. It is not advisable to use the chain button in cases where all cameras can see the calibration rig simultaneously. So therefore, I'll hit the reset button and redo the calibration. This time the calibration is successful for all cameras. We can now turn off the calibration rig. The score reported should be higher than 97. Scores between 95 and 97 are acceptable, but indicate a lower accuracy of the tracking. If you consistently get a score lower than 97, you should contact WorldVis support. After the system is calibrated, PPT will be able to calculate the 3D positions of markers based on their 2D positions in the different camera views. Use the 3D view to visualize your data in real time. Here we'll demonstrate five markers on an actor. For that, I'll change the marker number to 5. The position of the blue arrow on the grid representing the floor tells us where the origin is. It can be changed with these three global coordinate offsets. You can see what happens when we add a 1 meter global offset in the Y position. Now we'll remove the offset. The blue arrow points to PPT North the direction that has been defined as positive Z of the workspace, which can also be determined by the little coordinate system in the lower left corner. Dragging with the left mouse button rotates the view around a point which by default is the origin, but can be changed by a simple double click on the new location or dragging with the right button. Scrolling with the mouse wheel zooms the view. If you right-click in the window, a menu of options for controlling the markers, cameras, view, and grid settings will appear. Some of the marker properties are also up here. You can show or hide trails, 
and IDs and change the marker size. The marker visibility window shows the number of markers you selected here and their visibility in the environment. Markers failing to compute a 3D fix will display as red instead of green. Markers that have orientation but no position data are displayed orange. This view shows the position and orientation value for each marker. A standard PPT wireless marker will only show up with position information. With the addition of a post-process plugin, markers can also contain orientation information. The units shown here are in meters for position and degrees for rotation. Next, we'll learn how to tune the system, for which we'll only need one marker. Tuning will adjust PPT's tracking algorithms for your specific tracking needs. If you plan to track a slow-moving object, for example in head tracking, then the process of tuning will let PPT optimize its internal parameters accordingly. Alternatively, if you plan to track a fast-moving object with frequent occlusions, for example a dancer, the process of tuning will result in different internal parameters. Press the Tune button, and this window will open. Make sure only one marker is on and click on the start button to begin sampling. Move the marker around as if you are using it in your application. So in the head tracking scenario, you would hold the marker above your head and walk around in the tracking area. On the other hand, in the dancing scenario, you would do your leaps and spins. After the recording ends, you can stop the movement accept the recommended parameters, and click OK. The configuration pane gives you the option to choose different plugins in the categories post-process, output, 2D, 3D, and camera. 2D, 3D, and camera should not be touched unless you are directed to by WorldViz support. Post-process plugins give you the option to perform a wide variety of tasks related to transforming and filtering tracking data. For details on using them, refer to the documentation. The only category we are going to touch on in this tutorial is Output. Output plugins specify the method used for communicating with a host application. For a typical setup streaming PPT data to Vizard on a separate host, WorldViz recommends using the VRPN7 Output plugin, an Ethernet-based network protocol. The alternatives are shared memory for when rendering with Vizard on the same machine, RS-232 serial communication, or connection to a Motion Builder server. Once you've chosen your output plugin and press the Talk button, data will begin streaming. The last thing being discussed is the Messages window. In this window, notifications, warnings, and errors which pertain to the status of the cameras, tracking, and any post-process plugins you have added are shown. For these reasons, it is important to keep an eye on the messages in this window. This concludes the introductory tutorial on PPT Studio. For more detailed information on using PPT, refer to the PPT Studio documentation, use the WorldViz forum, or write to support at worldviz.com if you have a support contract.